Do you want to know three expenses that will affect your wealth accumulation big time? That's what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. Hi, I'm Camille Gaines. I'm a personal finance author and I share what I've learned from over 30 years of investing and sort of a general nerdiness around money. And I want to share with you three things that are expenses that make a huge difference in your wealth accumulation. Now, this isn't about budgeting, coupon clipping. This, these are factors that are huge. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars over time that can change and that can change your financial future, right? So these three big expenses, the first one is income taxes, okay? There's federal taxes, there's state taxes, and there's real estate taxes, and there are even more taxes. But those are the main ones that tend to eat into our money. So what can you do about this and how can you lower this? Well, I suggest getting a really good and current federal income tax book and looking at it, you know, get some ideas for ways that you can lower your tax expense. The tax rules are very clear and there are plenty of very legitimate ways that you can lower your income taxes. The problem is that most people don't really think about it that much until they're either doing their taxes April, early April or they're working with their CPA in February or March and the year has already passed by. It's too late. So if you work with the CPA, perhaps you'd like to meet with them during the year after tax season when they're not real busy to get some ideas, look over your returns, see what you could do differently this during the current year and future years. But also you can just educate yourself by getting a simple book that you know about for, so you can know about some strategies for reducing your taxes. So that's, that's the first thing I want to suggest. And you may have seen some of my other videos where I absolutely love um, small business and real estate for uh, tax, you know, benef the tax benefits that they provide. And if this is something that at all interests you, it's something you may want to look into or consider. Watch some of my other videos where I talk about multiple streams of income and the possibilities around that. So that's number one. Number two is cars, okay? So what I've done ever since I was in my 20s <laughs> and I purchased um, a car that I financed and interest rates were around 10% then and almost 10%, I still remember it was nine something, I thought I would never pay off that car. And I remember my dad had to go with me to co-sign for the car because I didn't have credit. I had recently finished school and my Volkswagen I had bought before didn't have air conditioning and I lived in Houston. I didn't think I would ever pay off that car. And what I learned from that was that I really like to buy used cars and I like to pay cash for them. So yes, there have been a couple of other times I've bought new cars when I moved back from overseas. I needed a car quickly and I bought it a new car. But in general, I buy used cars. So the last several cars that I purchased have been used cars. Now, for example, look at how this might work. So say that you want a new car and new, a new uh, SUV these days, uh, I looked it up online, cost uh, around $63,000. let us let us use that number, $63,000. Of course, there's a huge range on that. So I just pulled a number that I thought might make sense. And I tend to buy a little bit nicer cars um, that I think will last a long time. So let's say $63,000 is, is the price that you're going to pay for a new SUV right off the lot. Okay, and we've all, all heard that as soon as you drive the car off the lot, it depreciates 5%, right? So let's say that instead of purchasing that car, you get a really good quality car and it's a couple years old and it has low miles on it and you're able to purchase that car for $38,000, all right? So you have saved $26,000, all right? If you invest that $26,000 and earn 7%, which seems pretty doable, over a 20 year period, you have end up having over a hundred thousand dollars more simply from buying the car that was a couple years old right so this is 
huge, uh, over $100,000. So don't think of it as a difference of $26,000. Think of it as over $100,000. And think if you did this over a lifetime of cars, you could easily get to half a million, a million dollars, especially if, if you're married, you're purchasing cars for family members. This is a huge factor. This isn't coupon clipping. This is big money, okay? So the third area that I want to mention is your home. Now, we all love to live in a place that we enjoy, but what if that one home is, you know, that's almost perfect for you is 50,000 less than the home that is perfect for you? What if what if it's almost good enough? And what if you started viewing things in this way? Think of all the factors that are involved with that, especially if you finance the home over 15, 30 years. The difference in $50,000 for a home would be huge. You've got the mortgage on the um, interest that would add up over the years. You've got also utility costs, you've got taxes, and you've got the opportunity costs of what you could do with the other money if you invested it. And it all just compounds over the years. So I share these three things with you because as you can see, I've been around a few years and I've learned from these things. I can look back with perspective and hindsight and go, wow, these are really big numbers and these are really big areas I wished I had focused on a little bit more earlier in life. So look at your taxes, look at your car purchases, and look at your home purchases. And sure, you're probably already in a home. You don't buy homes all the time. But next time you purchase a home, or even if you're considering a rental property, which is a whole different topic, think about these big numbers and how they can affect your financial future without doing any more work. That's the beauty of this, is there is very little work involved, yet it can have a significant impact on your financial independence. That's what I wanted to share with you in this video. If you found it helpful, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up below the video and let me know that you liked it. It means a lot to me. I'll put some more information on uh, this whole thing about expenses and cash flow down in the description area below the video. Thank you for watching.